In this video, I'm gonna restore this old broken rocking chair, make some shellac from scratch and much more. Hello beautiful people and welcome to another video. In this one, I've got this really cool old but very broken rocking chair that I'm going to try and restore. As you can see, it was pretty wobbly, so I had to re-glue some of the joints, but the main problem was this big crack that I had to address somehow. As it's often the case, this chair also had some woodworm damage, so I had to take care of that before I did anything else. I used my woodworm treatment spray and I made sure I sprayed everywhere I could see some signs of damage. Because this wood was very dry and I didn't want it to crack, before I did anything with it, I gave it a really good soak and I used my steamer to make it more flexible. And because I wasn't sure how much it would actually bend, because I don't have a proper steamer and this is the best I could do, I clamped it not all the way and then I used my steamer again before I clamped it all the way down. And I basically left it to dry, hoping that it would bend into the shape that I needed it to be before I would actually glue it. A couple reasons why I did it this way. One of them is because it would just make the gluing process a bit easier. But also I didn't want to worry that all the tension that was in that wood would make it delaminate and go back to its original shape. Once I was done with that, I used the same steamer to loosen up the glue in those joints that I needed to re-glue and using my rubber mallet I took those pieces out. Fortunately, the armrests were only glued, there were no nails, so it was actually pretty easy to disassemble them, but I did make sure that I didn't break anything, so I was very careful. There was also some veneer on the bottom of the chair that was halfway gone, so I decided to take it completely off, because there was just no way to repair it. And it was actually super easy, so definitely it needed to go. As you can see, there was a piece of plywood that was broken. It actually came out in three separate pieces. So I just used some glue and I put it back in and I clamped it and left it to dry. I was actually thinking whether I needed to do anything about the bottom veneer because technically it was underneath the chair so no one would see it but I did want to make it look nice and before I did anything I got interrupted by one of the cats that came for a snack as he does most of the days <laughs> those cats are just so used to coming around and begging me for snacks as if this was actually their house Not sure you actually can tell but this piece bent halfway down so I was pretty happy with it and it looked like there would be just much less tension so I applied some sawdust and glue and I clamped it down just left it to dry and yes there were just many little bits that I had to fix and because this was plywood so the bottom ply delaminated, so I applied some glue and lots of clamps and that just did the trick. Mm -hmm. 
While waiting for the glue to dry, I decided to make some shellac because that's what I wanted to use as the finish. And because I had some flakes sitting around for a long time, I decided to use them. This was actually blonde color, which is almost the lightest. And I don't know if you know anything about shellac, but this was something that's made from a secretion of an insect and it comes in several different colors based on the wood sap that they feed on. This is something that's been used for many many years and it's actually very simple to remove if you have it on an old piece of furniture. You can just use alcohol or acetone and alcohol is also what you use to dissolve the flakes. It takes about 24 hours, maybe a bit more. And you can also grind the flakes to make it quicker. So I decided to sand the bottom of the chair a little bit and because I had some veneer, oak veneer, and that's exactly what the chair was made from, well not veneer but oak wood, so I decided to put it on the back and just make it look fancy. And to make it super easy for myself, I just put the chair on the veneer and I traced the shape of it and cut it with my scissors. There is more than one way to apply veneer, but my preferred way is to use glue. And basically what you do, you apply glue to both surfaces. But yeah, again, I was interrupted by a cat. <laughs> this, this time it was Hugo which is my favorite. This is my neighbor's cat and he's just so awesome, the friendliest cat I've ever seen in my life. And he just comes for cuddles, doesn't even care for a snack. Anyhow, going back to the veneer. So basically what you do, you apply glue to both surfaces and you let it dry. It was a nice day so I just left it outside and after about two hours I came back and I used my iron to apply the veneer to the chair and that's all you do. It's very simple. I have tried contact cement in the past but I personally don't really like it and it's a bit tricky because if you don't put it on right the first time that's it. You can't unglue it. So using my method is just more forgiving especially for someone who's never done it before. When I was done applying the glue, I started stripping the varnish off all the pieces and I used my sandblaster with built-in vacuum and I have the link in my favorite things on Amazon and I'll try to put the link in the description as well because lots of you guys have been asking me about it. It's super cool but it's not perfect so it doesn't work great on varnish that's in very good condition or very thick but if it's something a bit worn out it's just amazing and it just makes everything super easy especially on pieces like this that regular sanding would be not very practical and quite annoying to be honest but anyhow as you watch me struggle with this i just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you beautiful people for supporting me in all sorts of ways for buying me coffees via buy me coffee using my amazon wishlist link or by hitting the super thanks button that means a lot and i really appreciate it two thousand years later and for anyone who's interested in supporting the channel all the links are in the description and i really appreciate it thank you when I was finally done sanding at least the main bit there was some woodworm damage and I didn't want to just leave it or use wood filler so I used wood hardener that I've used in some of the other videos just to make sure that the wood was strong enough because obviously this is the base of the chair so as you rock in the rocking chair I want to make sure that it was actually stable enough So this is what I was talking about, 
I basically used regular household iron to warm up the glue. It melts a little bit and just joins both surfaces together. But before I did that, I used my puncturing thingy to just to know where the holes were because I had to enlarge them and actually use them to attach the base onto the chair later on. So yeah, that's what I did. And if you've never done this before, this is as simple as you can see. And just need to make sure that you apply the heat evenly to the whole surface to make sure that there's no loose bits. And when I did that, I used my trim bit on a handheld router and I just traced the base of the chair and cut off the excess veneer. This is just the easiest way to do it. It probably would have been a bit easier if I actually put the chair down or clamped it somehow instead of just holding it with one hand but oh well, it worked. I give it a little bit of um, sanding just to clean it up. As you can see, it's got a bit nicer color now. And then I use the holes that I punctured in the veneer to put the same trim bit in and I just traced the hole that was in the base of the seat from the inside and that's how I cut the holes in the veneer just to match the existing holes. I hope this makes sense. It was actually pretty easy. But I guess most things are easy when you just watch someone else do it. <laughs> Anyhow, so I just sanded a little bit the edges just to make them look nice and I started sanding the chair and scraping and yeah all sorts of other things just to remove the varnish and because this chair was quite complicated as far as the shape goes and it had all sorts of curved surfaces and carved surfaces and yeah this just took a very long time Six and a half hours later. So that was just a small portion of how long it actually took, so you can only imagine. Anyhow, what I'm doing right here, I'm just applying some glue because this central piece was moving but there was no way to get it out or do anything with it so this is just the best idea i came up with and when i was done with that i just felt like doing some more sanding because i uh, just didn't have enough so i sanded all the bits that didn't come off from sandblasting and also the wood hardener because it just left like a film on top of wood and it had different colors so I just wanted to make it a bit nicer and when I was done with that I took a short break from sanding and I applied oxalic acid because there was just lots of stains and just weird colors in the wood because it was old and really beat up so oxalic acid will remove organic based stains so there wasn't anything in particular that I wanted it to remove, but overall it just bleaches the wood a little bit. So that's why I used it. When it dries, um, you need to rinse it with water because first of all it deactivates it. And also if you sand it, it can be quite dangerous to inhale it. So yeah, I did it off camera. And sometimes I get comments about things that I don't show, but can show everything because the video would be three or four hours. I usually have about 
300 video clips and four or five hours of footage for each video that I added down to about 20 so you can imagine how many things I leave out because otherwise it would be really long and boring and as you can see this is the repair that I made and it's flat now and it looks actually pretty nice there is some little holes and gaps because you know when it cracked there are bits of wood that are missing so I'm just using wood filler to fill the gaps and eventually I'll probably use either lacquer toner or something else to help with blending but I'm not gonna make this chair brand new I kind of wanted to have this rustic look but look nice and clean and um, sturdy Do you know what I think I've had three or four of these multi-tool rotary thingies and they just never seem to be good enough for anything because they're just not very powerful but for this particular purpose it actually worked amazingly well i think this is the best i can do as far as sanding i'm pretty happy with it and i can't actually tell if this is spalting that was like in the original veneer or is it just because of some mold or fungi got into the chair when it was just out and you know rotting in the elements so i kind of like it and i'm gonna leave it like this i won't stain it dark there were lots of little holes from woodworm and just you know general wear and tear so i used some wood filler to take care of those and i let it dry And because I applied oxalic acid to the other bits, I also used it on this part of the chair just to make sure that everything had the same color. And finally, it was time to put it together. I used just regular wood glue. This is interior wood glue. I'm not going to keep this chair outside so I think this is exactly the same glue that was used originally so that's just what I did and because the fit was super tight I just used my rubber mallet and then need to clamp it just because how tight it was and it's ready to rock again I did exactly the same thing to the armrests just use my little brush and some glue and it was a bit fiddly and I was very careful not to break anything but yeah I managed to put them back in and again the fit was super tight so I didn't feel like I needed to clamp them And because I didn't get to do enough sanding during this project, I did a little more of that, this time sanded by hand. And when I was done with that, I was pretty much ready to apply the finish. You didn't think I was actually done sanding, did you? <laughs> So I'm pretty much done. I'm just basically going over the whole thing with a sanding sponge just to knock off any wood grains that raised when I was, you know, rinsing it with water or anything like that just to make it nice and smooth. And yeah, that's what I did. And I was pretty much ready to apply my homemade shellac. If you've never worked with shellac, it's super easy and super difficult. It's super easy because you can do it with a piece of cloth or a brush. You can even spray it on. And it dries really quickly, literally like in 30 seconds. So that's very nice. But also it's super annoying because it dries very quickly. So if you get any drips, then <laughs> you need to wait until it dries and try to fix it. So. Yeah, it's a bit tricky sometimes, but this is actually pretty easy 
top coat to apply, especially if you have flat surface, probably one of the easiest ones you can think of. But I don't really use it very often, so I just wanted to do something different for you. So you guys can see that there are many ways to finish a piece of furniture. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have, please do like, comment and subscribe, because this will make me very happy and I will appreciate it. And enjoy the final results and I will see you in the next video.